Welcome to Epic Box Battlegrounds, and today we're going to be taking another look at the Conflict series. Today we're moving along to the West Front, Battle of the Bulge, and it's definitely getting ready to go down. I may get mopped up. We've only played this once, five turns in. So yeah. Here's the start screen. There's JN down below. We're not even going to bother taking a look at the Hall of Fame today. We're not expecting the leaderboards, but who knows. I'm not even really expecting to get through this. We're going to do it on normal, as always. Sometimes I do hard, ultra hard, whatever. Not on very many of them. Here is the welcome text. A little bit of info on the battle itself. As always, feel free to take a look, browse through, pause it, rewind, whatever you want to do. We cannot let the Germans get over 150 VPs. We do have to knock them down to 10 or less. Actually, it says less. So, 9. Here's the front. We'll go to the mini map. That's where the Germans are going to push on through. Last game, they came in about the lower right. Don't know if they'll do the same here. So we cut the music down and uh, take a closer look at things really quickly. We got some scattered infantry units, a couple armored divisions. And that's about it. There is one German infantry unit sighted, and he is currently occupying the same hex as one of my divisions. So looks like their reconnaissance bumps straight into my uh, perimeter. So we're going to conduct a little withdrawal here, and we're going to try and make it as orderly as possible, but it is going to be very strategic. We're going to try and form up some form of defensive line or something that resembles <laughs> a defense to the best of our ability here. And uh, in the meantime, since we got these guys doubled up, we're going to take them out while we can, while we have a chance. That may spell their doom. But we do have that river right there, so hopefully uh, that will delay whatever Germans are over there. As you can see, there's um, one division of armor I'm going to move down and try and support them as they pull, pull back. But overall, it's just everybody move back. I don't want to give up too much ground because obviously this is a battle of bulge. You want to hold that line as long as you can. You cannot let them you know, get through the crossroads. So. Uh, that is our main objective here and as I've done before in any of the conflict games that I've made videos for I will do a little introduction we'll take a look at things see how you know everything's gonna turn out for one or two turns and uh, then we'll speed up the the scale a lot quite a bit here and get this sucker over and done with I don't want to take all day doing this and I'm sure you don't want to spend all day watching it there's the US supply zone, one of them. That's my forward line supply zone up north there. And uh, hopefully we'll be getting some reinforcements out of there and resting any of our divisions that have time to rest. Don't know how much of that we'll get in. But uh, anybody who's too far back, we are going to move forward. It's just the decision of where. You don't want to rush forward too much with your reserves because you may be uh, putting them in the wrong spot and that's not a good thing um, the first run, run through that I did on this I quickly got swept aside so I'm glad I did not just try and make a video on the very very first run because it would have been bad and this one may not be much better as you can see they're coming on we got some SS coming on that's the shield icons right there and uh, there's some tigers and some more tigers <laughs> and they are gonna come on heavy they did bring everything that they had and we got some more SS another unit of SS some Panthers some German line and they're gonna push us back And that one's going to fall back out of there. He's going to try and cut us off, though. A sneaky little guy. So we'll move along to turn two. 
And you can see the new resources minefields. That's one key point in this game that I believe I'm going to be leaning on is the minefields. We're going to rely on those to slow the Germans down at every turn that they make. Every time that they push one of our units back, they're going to be pushing us off. They're going to be walking straight into a minefield, hopefully. And, you know, we got we, it's the same thing as always if you're on the defensive with these games. Um, you don't want to get outflanked. And the AI is very, very sneaky, even on normal difficulty. So you can see the Germans have already put a bunker right there in the objective that they took over. And I think uh, retaking these things might prove quite difficult unless I get some uh, solid reinforcements. I don't know when I will be receiving any backup or what they will be. I did want to play this uh, and kind of get the feeling for this battle that the soldiers did somewhat with the uh, fog of war and the unknown. So that's what we're doing here. And we're going to still pull back with what we can. Like I said, I don't want to give too much ground. I'm definitely not going to move past uh, further west than Bastogne or Liege. And I don't think the Germans will even let my forward forces withdraw that fast. Uh, they got a lot of armor coming on. And that is the goal here, is I, I have to form up some sort of line as to where I think the main assaults are spearheading at, because I need to stop them. If I let their armor get out behind me, uh, not only are my forward lines going to get cut off really quickly, but I'm not going to be able to catch that armor. They're going to scatter and start taking over objectives real fast. They'll, they'll hit that 190, I think is what they needed. They'll hit that 190 real quick. Uh, so anything that gets by me is, is, is going to be imperative that I chase down and snatch really quick. Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and speed it up here in just a second. I'm going to finish taking a quick look here. I don't think there's anything imperative to tell you about right off the bat other than the German steamroller is coming here pretty soon. So I'll drop down some minefields. I only got one more after this one. Hmm. I think, uh, yeah, we'll put it right here. Yeah, try and keep those those uh, first divisions right there from getting surrounded. It's not the first division, just the lead divisions of my forces, of my defense. I don't know if there's much hope for them or not. And we will use uh, the disrupt rear lines to take away the SS movement points. Those guys have three movement points and they seem to come up with three almost every turn unless they're currently in combat then they'll come up with two sometimes one but they're really hard to wear out and fatigue they just keep on going and going and going and going and even if you surround them completely and cut off their supply it seems like they still pop up with one or two movement points they are the SS they, they do it well and we got some more German armor coming on the field uh, and they're gonna try and push that artillery back that artillery must be on some sort of defensive ground because it just gets pushed back, it doesn't get destroyed. But you can see here, um, they're coming on a little higher than I was expecting to, um, and I'm still not even sure if that's their main force. Down there where those two infantry just marched south, um, behind this screen right here is the 25th Infantry. They are the furthest southern unit that I have on the map and uh, they're gonna hold that town that they're in no matter what's coming at them they're gonna try to at least they, they hold it at any cost as their orders so we got some we got an armored unit up here with some really good movement points and I don't need the movement points really right now I think I'm going to maybe move him down south uh, we'll see We'll see if that's a good move or not. But we're going to continue on with it. We are committed.
what to do with these guys moving out of town and you know what let's go ahead and cut really quickly and then we'll speed it right on up okay and we kicked it up quite a bit here actually we are about 310 percent because I was taking a lot of time and thought here and in a lot of places so uh, it shouldn't be too bad even though I kicked it up that much we should still have time to talk about some important things but right now uh, looks like my forces right here are gonna get caught up so and I'm gonna lose a battle with that armor division trying to help out that infantry and uh, that might have been a mistake. There's the 25th that I was telling you about earlier. They are going to hold that position for quite a while, hopefully, and not let them uh, take control of that southern road. That's going to be their key movement down there. So as long as I can hold that road and keep them from scattering, we should be okay. Uh, you can see they are going up there to the north. I'm going to send over the infantry, maybe hope contain that. I don't know how much they're sending. I'm I sh <laughs> so I'm just gonna keep on pulling back for the time being, and I definitely have reconsidered things there. We will let the minefields deal with that, and we're gonna move on. And as you can see, they are still coming out here. Uh, the reason they keep on appearing and disappearing is because I'm withdrawing so I'm losing visuals, I'm losing sight of them so and uh, the, the bad thing is I'm also giving them room to spread out they're not hitting so many traffic jams, they're not getting fatigued and uh, you can see the airborne has dropped in way in the rear there the 101st and the 82nd airborne and we still have a whole lot of SS up top. They're coming on higher than last game, but the good thing about that is is I was already planning on making a, a minor offense, you know, go on the minor offensive up north with that small force that I had assembled. You can see it there. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. That This may buy me a little bit of time. So let's go ahead and get some of these guys down there. The bad thing is I still gotta watch whatever they are uh, putting into action up north there in that far corner. Last thing I want to do is let them take over my supply depot so I'll keep an eye up there in that corner or at least I'll try to. You know you can only manage things you know so much when you're facing the unknown so we're gonna end turn five and this game does have a nighttime turn. I believe it's once every four to five turns. Didn't really pay attention, but uh, geez, they're, they're bringing a lot of heat here. But with the nighttime turns, as with all the other conflict series games during nighttime, the movement is severely limited. Only some of your guys are going to get movement points. I'm not sure if that's based off of fatigue or their situation or whatever. Um, but you do get as a resource every nighttime turn you get a certain amount of nighttime movement points to distribute let's say for instance you'll get four in one to one nighttime turn and you can use those to give your units uh, movement points including armor and uh, a lot of times I find that it takes two of those to give one movement point to a unit and uh, so if you have four you could probably expect to get two two solid movements out of a division or two separate divisions but that is one thing you want to be careful of is uh, when the guys go negative movement you don't want to use those points on negative movement because it, they won't get movement it will just take them out of the negative I think it may not even do that speaking of negative movement that is one of our objectives for this is to um, you know we want the Germans always in negative movement modifiers and numbers so how we do that is force them through forests, force them across rivers, force them into minefields, hit them with our artillery, um, and of course in the mix there hit them off and on with uh, some sort of counter attacks wherever we can put together. I don't want to be on the offensive too much just yet. I don't 
really want to even hit the attack button unless I think I have really good odds because uh, I just don't think I'm the quality is going to get me any wins here unless I have really good odds. I think I may put some heavy stuff in there where the uh, Germans were laying down some heat. I, I got my 4th Infantry Division up there. Maybe pop on some mortars right here and some bazookas, minefields, um, whatever I can put down here. I don't have very much right here and they're all stacked together and, and big traffic jams but so are the Germans. So I don't want to get flanked and let's yeah let's do it to the fourth and uh, really give us some heat here. We are gonna have to watch this flank so we'll kind of bring a guy down in We hit them. We hit them hard. You can see I made a bad move over there, capturing the objective over on the right hand side. It, uh, they've already cut off that full unit. Bad move on my part. I knew better when I moved them over there. So we do have some Shermans rolling in. Uh, let's try and block off this area. You can see the Germans are pretty heavy in that area somewhere. And we're going to keep on marching the airborne up as fast as we can. So we're at least containing them. I made a mistake. I had a pretty solid line there and I pulled a unit out of it and the Germans just ran through it. Um, or they're getting ready to I, right here. So I thought that forest was going to... I don't know what I was thinking. I just wasn't thinking. Maybe I was thinking about something else. Who knows? But you can see the fourth just got hit pretty hard, pushed out of there. Um, so I don't know how much it, good it did. It looks like we possibly repelled a couple of those attacks, but not very many of them. We are getting a little, see those misdirections. We are getting some uh, victories in here, but that guy can't bust out of there. That artillery just can't get out of that spot that it's in. And our guys are just getting pushed back to Malmody. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do here. There's not much I can do except sit there and take it. Uh, down below on the, the 25th, as soon as they get some solid contact, I'm going to stack them up just like I did the 4th. I'm going to put some special orders, mortars, bazookas, everything I can on them. The special orders really put them over the top. You can see I'm losing stuff here. Uh, I got a full artillery shot finally. I'm going to hit something, take away those movement points, or try to. So we do have uh, the allies in a lot of the conflict series games, they have the pontoons, the pontoon bridges, so we can use those on divisions or armored units, whatever, um, to cross rivers and that'll get them across without such a negative movement point allotment their next turn. So we got the airborne still moving up, they landed way back there. They're on a foot race to Bastogne, hopefully they can get there before the Germans break through and get there. And you can see we're, we're putting on the paint on them. We're knocking down some hit points off their armor. Uh, yes, we are. So we're still getting pushed back, though. And you can see the fourth is now in the red there. They are uh, hurting bad. But they, I don't know if they, I don't know if they held it long enough. You see we got some B-17s. We'll throw those in the mix to try and knock down their movement allotment here. 
and get the okay the airborne has arrived at their objectives we're going to take the uh, 101st and move them down south there try and refor reinforce that bridgehead so it's also vital that we secure, secure any of those bridgeheads those obviously you know lead to and from roads which is what the Germans are trying to take so those bridges also we can delay their entire you know their entire front with a couple of those bridges so if we can block those off and try and force them across the rivers it's all the better we do need to uh, when they start breaking through our lines we need to try and start cutting off their supply whoever gets past us not only do we have to chase down but the first thing we need to do we need to focus on cutting their supply we're gonna try and maybe encircle them right here we're probably being outflanked as I talk up north above that group but we'll see we're gonna take somebody in there and stack them up here in just a second probably um, It's not good. We lost that battle over there on the right, upper right. And they are busting through right there. I think that unit smack dab in the middle is getting ready to get a whole bunch of stuff. So we'll see it again in just a second. You can see right here, uh, <laughs> it's just the bombed out 4th Infantry Division and the 82nd up at Bastogne and they got I think the whole German army coming at them uh, except for this up here this is I don't know which one's their main force is it this up here or is it at Bastogne I don't know my gut tells me it's this northern force right here so we're gonna stack this guy up uh, right there in the middle and hopefully do the same thing to them what we did down below with the fourth except maybe even get a little more in there see the 78th got a new skill um, we have some sort of defense going on here. I don't know how these guys all came together. They just all walked into each other and got lucky and made a front. Uh, that unit SS kind of pushed back further than I'm comfortable with, but we'll see. I don't know what we're going to do here. We're going to stack up those airborne as soon as we got the supplies to do, that's for sure. So we do got some solid armor reinforcements coming from down south, so that's good. Now's the time to stack up the 25th. We're going to do it, and uh, it's time for them to get busy here in just a minute. We're going to start harassing those forces and move up into the German lines there, well behind the lines with them, see if we can. I don't know. We'll take a look. You know, we'll, we'll take some shots first and see what comes crawling out of their holes, and our, ch our plans very well may change. You can see I'm having a hard time containing the center. I don't think this is their main force right here, um, but it's still a very, very serious threat if I don't contain that there in the middle. Um, we're losing things left and right here. I'm getting ready to lose the supply depot up here. I got to I gotta Oscar Mike those guys in a hurry back to the supply depot. I don't know. They're, the Germans are pretty close. If I lay some down some minefields in front of them, and if I got any movement point resources to use on my infantry, get them back home, I don't know what. We'll see. It's a foot race to the supply depot. I don't want to lose that because I don't know if I'll lose any reinforcements that are supposed to come on or whatever. These games are all trial, trial by play and, and uh, learning by losing pretty much and eventually you figure things out. Things are different with each game. If you can surround people, that's always a good thing. You can see a lot of my guys are getting surrounded. Uh, I'm, I'm in danger of losing pretty much a whole army group up north by getting their supply supplies cut off. As you can see, they're already starting to get enveloped there in the center. I do have the 82nd. I'm going to back them up. They were going to try and make a stand in front, in the woods in front of Bastogne, but uh, 
I'm going to use that those woods, that forested area, to knock some movement points off whoever comes in there. And I'll probably end up using that rear guard action on some more SS, probably that three movement point SS. Those guys are just devastating when they have three movement points, and I know because I've used them. I'm going to put up uh, the Battle of Kursk here, I think, next. I enjoy the Battle of Kursk very much. So the 83rd Infantry Division up top got in some uh, hits there. We got another division of infantry that came on. We're now at the end of turn 13. And the 82nd looks like it's going to be in a whole world of hell here in just a second. So we got that bridge blocked off pretty good. Our reserves are actually on the attack on that bridge down south. We need to take that over, get up there, free up the 101st, and you can see right there our supply depot is in serious trouble. I think I got a movement point in there. We're going to check it out here next turn. And we just retook Malmedy, which is a good thing, but I don't know how much longer we can hold on to that area. We have one stacked up unit, I believe it's the 83rd Infantry Division, and they have a bunch of heavy weapons. They're the only people down up there with the armaments to get anything done. Everybody else is just in pretty much a supporting role. They're doing what they can with combat modifiers. And, um, you know, it's, it's tough going everywhere. The 82nd Airborne has no visibility on anything that's going around them. It is uh, nighttime. So... It's not nighttime. I'm sorry. But not, not much to say other than the fact right here at the end of turn 14, I'm starting to fall apart with the exception of the southern, southern area right there where the 101st is. That's my only bright spot. And the 82nd just got pushed out of Bastogne. turn and we just retook Malmody again because the Germans retook it on their last turn it's a fierce fierce battle right there and you see I got several divisions cut off down south I need to bust through there I just did that's why Malmody and, and that chain further up is so important I gotta keep the supplies flowing down there that's a whole group. That's a whole, basically a whole army group right there. And uh, going to try and recover those tanks a little bit. They're still depleted. There's nothing much they can do except maybe hopefully hold that line. Sometimes with your low hit point units, if you have other units around them in supporting conditions, they can get some really, really good, impressive victories in on the defensive side. So. You know, they're, they're not out of action yet. The 82nd, we're going to stock them up here, and uh, it's their time. they they got to hold that line. They have one armored division in support right now, and uh, that's a whole hell of a lot better than it was a turn or two ago, though, I can tell you that. And they have not taken many hits. The 101st is in, and their supporting armor are doing a damn good job pushing up that road. They're trying to desperately to work their way up to Bastogne here. And you can see up north, I'm very desperate. And uh, I've moved in an artillery to hopefully knock away some movement points, and I did. So that's hopefully is going to halt that German advance for the next turn. If it does, I don't know. My infantry may be within foot range, depending on conditions and whether or not I have any resources for movement or not. So 
there's Germans popping out of the woodworks down there where the airborne is. So we'll see how that goes. And I am going to get back to that supply depot. I'm going to pop a mortar on that division there and hopefully fend off whatever attacks are coming. I cannot lose that supply depot. I made a big mistake all across that northern front up there. It's just horrible. I got healthy divisions cut off early almost lost the supply depot. I got uh, another division who was depleted from useless assaults on an unnecessary objective at the time. I could have waited till later for that once I grouped up and and determined some sort of muster area for my for my northern forces but um, it's too late for that so we'll do what we can and you can see up in up in here it's just vicious they got German armor. I'm so impressed with the US forces up and around Maladi that they've held that whole German force right dead in its tracks. I'm pretty sure that's the main German attack right there and uh, I couldn't be I couldn't be more uh, I couldn't demand anything more out of those men up there. Uh, as you can see I'm hitting misdirection forces all over and that's just bad, that's wasting movement points, wasting attacks, and it's it's putting my guys out of position. It's bad news. Sometimes they do good if you're advancing, but very rarely. Um, that 82nd is not giving up ground, that 82nd Airborne. That was just there at the bottom of the screen, still is. They're putting in work. And the 101st is going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with an SS division. Uh, not sure which one that is. Right here, uh, they're spearheading that SS division that's in the yellow hit points far to the left. I believe that's the first SS division. We're going to do what we can to try and cut him off. Um, I think I I've been keeping an eye on this line as close as I can to try and determine what's been running off as they surrounded me. I think it was the SS and maybe, hopefully, only one other uh, division of something. I don't know what it was. I think infantry, but we're going to find out. Uh, it looks like it's going to move up towards Liege, and all I have is the tank destroyers there. Um, no, I got the Shermans right there. I'm going to move the Shermans off, try and help out the supply depot. I don't know what's more important, the supply depot or, or keeping them at Liege. Well, keeping them at Liege is more important, but I'm banking on the fact that there's only one or two, um, you know, fatigued and wounded units that broke through uh, that far so hopefully I'm gonna get some reserves here and rush them over there they and that SS unit just crossed a river so hopefully that'll uh, delay them even further I'm gonna take a big gamble here and defend the supply depot so you can see I managed to cut off a unit right here and uh, they're gonna stay that way until I got time to take care of them which will probably be very shortly. I am going to have to cross a river. I don't think I'll waste a pontoon with that unit to do so but we'll see. So the airborne is still uh, in the thick of things. The 101st down here where I just placed a mine they did get a uh, refreshment of uh, a new division coming on the field for reinforcements so that's a good sign for them and I will pull them down into that town just in case that SS is planning and then I'll cover their northern flank with that armored division. So as you can see it's advance withdrawal, advance withdrawal and the 82nd we just retook the stone with the 82nd and their tanks and we cut off a whole lot of German armor in the process so that's a very very good thing it's uh, still bad news up north by the supply depot and near Malmody it looks like we may be collapsing very soon. Uh, we have all those units down there surrounded and cut off. They're going to be uh, pretty much useless here very soon unless I can rescue them and I just don't see how I'm going to do that. It's a German turn and they're going to probably continue doing what they're doing. You can see Malmody's still getting hit and we just lost it again. And uh, no, we lost Malmody. We got pushed back further further north than Malmody. We're in a town above Malmody. We lost that a long time ago. That's where our guys are surrounded at. Sorry, sometimes the speed scale, I, I don't 
catch up on the names of things sometimes. <laughs> but uh, you see right here, we, we got that armor. Those Shermans came in and looks like they are rescuing that supply depot. I don't know if the uh, if there's a second wave of attacks coming or not, but I think the first wave has been fought off. So we're going to move in and try and finish off these guys. You can see they only have if they move if they get some movement points. There's only one space that they need to cross to re-establish re supply routes. So uh, let's finish them off while they can. And down here, you can see the 101st just took took a loss there. Um, Probably should have moved these guys. Okay. You can see the 25th down south. They're just putting a hurting on any German infantry that come down south there. And uh, that's the point, is I want to push everything that comes that way straight up. And I want to cut off any western German forces. I want to cut off their supplies at the same time while I'm doing it. Uh, all while maintaining a supply route to the 25th Infantry Division, so it's uh, quite a balancing act between everything. Still saving the pontoons, but I think I'm going to be using a lot of the minefields here. And I don't know what I'm going to do here. Everything's pretty much wounded. And Drop some minefields. And that was it. That was the only minefield I had. Alrighty, let's pause for just a second. Because I have to speed this up. Skip to clip scene, and now we're back at normal one time speed again. So. Okay, I think that took care of the issue there and now we're back up to scale speed here so at certain points I was taking quite a while to think about some things and uh, to determine what was the best course of action you can see those tigers just reestablish supply that's not a good thing I was trying to take them out we're just getting hammered we're getting pushed back hex by hex by hex surrounded rinse wash and repeat same thing we did manage to at least somewhat contain the problem up here. You can see we just lost a battle even with a pretty stacked infantry division up there. So, And that was actually a crushing defeat that hit them pretty hard. Uh, we did get some movement points down here. We'll march them out a little bit, but they're not going anywhere. Two hexes. Two hexes. Such a long way away. So just looking at the airborne down here, and uh, it's still a bright spot, even though we're losing battles there. Um, the 101st is doing its job, and, and see, we're losing, we're losing across that front, though. I don't know how much longer they can hold out. If they lose just a couple hit points of health, then they're going to be completely ineffective on the off on the offensive. So. And uh, we are going to split this battle up into two separate videos because of the length of it. So here in maybe uh, four minutes or so, we're going to split it up. And I will do a part two. I'll post part two up fairly quickly. And uh, you can see I got some tank destroyers up there from that second supply depot. And we're going to roll them down to try and halt that SS division. I don't know how effective they're going to be at doing so. Uh, that's completely questionable, but we're going to find out real fast because they are the only thing we got there. Imagine what their commander is telling them. You want us to go attack a division of SS? And that's the first SS division. Or it could be the third SS. The Totenkopf. Uh, I use, I have used them in a couple scenarios actually. You can use the 3rd SS Division and uh, it's quite entertaining to stack them up with whatever resources you can and really put the hurt on people. Usually the Germans, <laughs> or excuse me, the Russians. 
Uh, the 101st down there is going to take a leap of faith and push forward. We're going to try and cut off. They're trying to cut off our forces in Bastogne, and we're going to try and cut off them while do they're doing that. So uh, I think we were patient, and that may pay off here. I think the Germans are feeling the need to break through, and, and they're forcing uh, some action there, which may be a mistake on their part. I do enjoy the AI on these conflict games outstanding so we're gonna be pushed back into the stone and once again we lose it <sighs> so we lost the stone again we're still getting pushed back from Yupin lost Malmody long long time ago the supply depot may or may not still be under attack we don't know uh, Liege has been lost and that threatens the second US supply depot and the only thing we have between the supply depot and Liege and that SS unit is one unit of tank destroyers. And I think there's another unit along with that SS. I don't know. That's un unknown as well. So this is bad. We're going to continue moving along here. In just a few more minutes, I'll go ahead and split the video up. Um, I do got to wrap up a couple things that I'm very interested in seeing what happens before we do. And it looks like the 4th Armor Division up there is putting, putting some hits out on the Germans. Can't do much here, but we still got to hold them doesn't matter how limited they are or weak, depleted, hungry, tired, exhausted, they have to hold it. Now I understand. I think this game finally made me understand the importance of the Battle of the Bulge and holding that line. Not really fully, and I, I very well understood it beforehand, but I just feel it in this game. Maybe it's because it's my first playthrough and I've decided to just go all out and all the way to the end live or die on video so and the supply depot still in danger we got a crushing victory because we brought that armor division down and then we put the mortars the mortars right on top of their heads so that did do some good a lot of good actually and for the first time in a while, that supply depot is surrounded by friendly terrain. Friendly terrain. Not much of that on this battlefield, I can tell you that. Um, I don't know if anybody here reads Sun Tzu or not, The Art of War. He described what I think are seven types of battlefield terrain, and uh, one of those was, the, I believe, the final terrain and that was fatal terrain and that was basically in the situation we're in right now your troops have no choice but to fight so they're gonna put 100 percent into all their fighting according to Sun Tzu you'll never see a soldier perform better than when he is on fatal terrain and that is the one advantage of fatal terrain And all along the front, I, I gotta tell you, I've contained it better than, I mean, every turn, every turn I hit the end turn button, I expect just the Germans to move 25 hexes to the left. And it hasn't happened yet. And you can see that SS unit attacked my uh, tank destroyer unit, and the tanks fended them off. That was amazing. A three hit point tank destroyer unit fending off a uh, SS division. So that was worth sticking around for. And I think here in just a second we will go ahead and split this up. Let's just finish up this turn, hit the end turn button. Okay, 
So, anyway, hope you enjoyed part one of the Battle of the Bulge. And uh, come on over to Epic Fox and see the second video or any of my other videos. Hit the like button. I will see you soon.